Let's do this last one. Hopefully my card isn't filled up. Cause that would be kind of sucky. YouTube friends, what is going on? David Lee back with a brand new video. Today we're talking about how to color grade Canon 1DX Mark II footage. Now I know a lot of you probably don't own the Canon 1DX Mark II or have no inclination of buying the Canon 1DX Mark II, uh, but a new friend of mine, Mr. Stephen Knight, Stephen Knight underscore movie operator. I don't even. Oh, this is probably overexposed. Uh, bad example. I'll, I'll, I'll take it from my from my uh, from my computer. Uh, but Mr. Stephen Knight sent me a message a couple of weeks ago asking if uh, I could create a tutorial on how to color grade uh, the Canon 1DX Mark II footage using James Miller's. Uh, C log, C log neutral, right? Uh, so today we're going to be going over a overview. Um, yeah, an overview, not an in-depth thing, but an overview of how I color grade Canon 1DX Mark II in the context of like travel videos, right? Because that's what Steven actually is thinking about buying the 1DX Mark II for is for travel videos. So top into Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use to color grade. You guys have seen my other color grading tutorials. If you haven't, shame on you. Go up, go up here, go up here, and I have a orange and teal tutorial. Um, I also have a sepia tutorial and a day for night tutorial. That being said, let's go ahead and hop into Adobe Premiere Pro, and I will show you guys how I color grade the One X Mark II. All right, friends, let's get to some color grading. Um, some color grading? Yeah. All right. Anyways, um, I'm going to use what I normally use. Uh, which is not Lumentry. I use a program which you guys have probably heard a million times now if you're a subscriber of mine. I use Magic Bullet Looks um, and I also put a layer of Film Convert on top of that. Um, I used to use Lumetri and I can still color grade that way. Um, I choose not to just because Magic Bullet Looks has more tools. Um, they're, they're easier for me to use, you know, for me. And I've just, I use them all the time. So for me, it's become um, kind of like a uh, like second nature. All right, so Magic Bull Looks, you can look this up. Um, I'll, I'll put a thing up at the top right. You can go look at uh, Red Giant for all their other products. Um, and I wouldn't recommend something unless I actually use it. And I've been using Red Giant products for the past three years, personally and professionally, right? So paid work and um, personal personal projects, short films and docs, all that stuff. We're gonna use a program called Magic Bullet Looks. I'm gonna rename Looks to Mojo because that's the plugin we're going to use inside of Magic Bullet Looks, right? So you can see that Magic Bullet Looks has a ton of stuff in here, right? Everything from four-way color. Um, I'll show you really quick. It's a great way to color correct footage, lower your shadows, uh, bring up your midtones a little bit. You can play around with your highlights. Uh, this is a really cool, um, not a hack. I guess it's a, it can be a hack depending on what camera you have. It works really well for like high dynamic range cameras where you can actually save highlights, right? Let's reset this. I'll just show you again here really quick what it looks like. I'm gonna turn preview on. Uh, ranges you can see here, these are the shadows, right? This is the blacks. This is my midtones, And then this is my highlights, right? So say you're in a situation where like um, you overexpose your highlight areas, right? I'm um, in this scenario, I, I did not. Um, because the Canon 1DX Mark II does not have good dynamic range. So I had to save the highlights and sacrifice the shadows. Um, but as an example, like say if, um, say if the highlights were blown out, a lot of it was blown out. If I hold down the highlight area, you see right now it's, it's highlighting in white, kind of like the alpha mat of what is a highlight, right, in this scene. If I change it, so now you can see that, okay, if I mirror to the left, my highlights are kind of like in the window and also on the outskirts of the window. Okay. Now, if I disable this plugin, you can see like nothing's changed, right? Because I didn't do anything. I just gave it values, right? I just say, hey, now these are what's highlights. Um, so if I bring the highlight down, you can see how it kind of brought the, uh, the window down with it, right? Um, which is what it's supposed to do. That's what I told Magic Bull Looks that like, hey, everything in this window is like a highlight now. So that's a really cool like little hack if you have um, again only it only really works best with a high dynamic range cameras where you can actually save the the dynamic range. Um, but let's get back on point. We're gonna go to post and we're gonna go to Mojo. Mojo is kind of like an all in one um, all in one plugin. What it does is it adds contrast. It, um, it darkens the shadows, meaning it creates like a 
um, a, a bluish greenish tint or hue to the shadows, which I love. Um, and then it de squeezes, you can see here blue squeeze and skin squeeze. So anything um, that kind of is like blue in, in hue, uh, it will desaturate ever so slightly. Whatever is in skin tones, it will also uh, desaturate ever so slightly, right? Not so much. So you can play around these values here um, within the actual window, right? I basically just leave it alone and I click OK, right? So that's what it looks like. Now that may be that may be too much, right? So then what I do is I lower the intensity of or the strength of a Mojo, right? So I'm gonna go about, I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna go about 30% like that, right? And then we go before and then after, right? It's just adding a little bit of something in, okay? A little bit of contrast. Uh, it's adding that, that greenish, bluish tint to the shadows, which I love, okay? Uh, next up, film convert. Uh, let's go ahead and put this on top as well too. Film converts, let's keep this in the context of the 1DX Mark II. Uh, they actually yeah, they actually now have a 1DX Mark II profile. They never did for the longest time, and then they did, and I was like, oh, cool. Um, but since I'm using the EOS HD uh, custom log profile, I found that the 1DC camera profile with Marvel look, works really well. So we're going to work with that. Okay, now automatically, I can't see shit in the shadows anymore, so it's, let's change some stuff around, okay? First thing I always change is the grain. Uh, this is um, preferential, I guess, right? Preference is your preference. I find that with the 1DX, 1DX Mark II, I like 40% grain in general, right? In general. Um, the size of the grain is, again, that's something that's preference, right? It's preference, but it's also uh, the delivery format because YouTube compresses the living daylights out of fucking everything and I hate it. Uh, Vimeo is beautiful. Facebook is terrible. Instagram is even worse, right? Um, so if, if, if this was like a short film uh, that you're going to blow up on the big screen, um, you know, I would keep it at either either Super 35 or 35 mil full frame, depending on the camera, right? Uh, but in general, like if it's going to YouTube or Vimeo, um, sometimes I would stay away from like the, the super grainy textures, like you know, like Super 16 or Super 8, it's like that's pretty grainy. Um, so Super 35, 35 full, uh, 35 millimeter full frame is what, I, is what I usually use. So in this case, 35 mil full frame. Uh, convert to, these are just different film stocks if you're not familiar with them. Uh, Fuji, Fuji Film and Kodak have been around for a long, long time. And they've created such beautiful film stocks over the years that have been used um, in your your favorite movies, right? I, I guess depending on how old you are. Um, but I tend to use these top four, uh, these two Kodak film stocks and then these two Fuji film stocks. So we're gonna go with Fuji Film 8543, right? One of my favorites. Film color and curve go hand in hand, kind of like the intensity of, of, the, of the film stock, right? So as you can see, if I lower it, I kind of get my contrast back. Same thing with the curve. If I lower it, I'm getting um, more of the contrast back. But again, that's in the context of the film color, right? So I think here, I'm just going to add a little bit. Let's go 20%. And then, yeah, like 20%. I usually keep them relatively the same. It just depends on, on the scene, okay? Color correction, uh, I don't really touch this. Because you can basically change your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights, right? Like, uh, like, like in Lumetri. Um, I, if I do change anything, it's a saturation. So I'm gonna just bump it up a little bit, 110%. Right? Boom, done. I like that. Okay. Uh, and then from here, you can use adjustment layers, or you can go clip by clip. Depends on what you're doing. Uh, let's go with just clip by clip by clip. Okay. So now we're getting off the plane. I'm just going to copy and paste these values, right? I'm going to go to a place that I feel looks pretty good. It's probably right here where that someone's coming in. Let's disable film convert. Uh, Mojo, I actually might want to punch it in. Like, let's go 70%, right? Okay, I'm, I'm digging it. Uh, then let's add film convert. 
I may play around with the film color. Yeah, I like that. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Be like here. It's funny too because I used to be someone that like loved like everything crushed. Like the blacks, I just didn't want to see them. I just wanted to see this like like Christopher Nolan Dark Knight, this bleakness. So I would go like all the way here, right? Uh, and then I don't know, my taste kind of changed. I actually kind of want to do, you know, see something. So yeah. Okay, plain, plain, plain. Cool, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste these guys. Go to my next clip. Cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm liking that. Let's maybe bring Mojo back a little bit to, let's go 50%, right? And then film convert, film color. I'm actually gonna bring this down a little bit. Yeah, right here. Cool. And as you probably noticed, like I don't have um, my scopes up, which I normally do. So if we do use the scopes, oh, where are they? Oh, here we go, different tab. Okay, cool. Um, let's bring this maybe like over here. Okay. And like that. Okay, so as you can see from my scopes here, um, blacks, I still have a good amount of detail here. Um, the highlights, I mean, that's basically just this big bulb, so I can't see anything. But most of my exposure is pretty good. You know, I'm in that like that 20% um, of the the light shadows, right, into the uh, into the 70% and the 80% IRE values, right? So again, I always, I do use lumetri scopes, but for something quick and easy like this, like I might not, I might just eyeball it, right? Uh, same thing here, right? I have some black, uh, some black detail left as well as the, the full spectrum of the IRE, right? Okay, last but not least, go to this last clip here and uh, same thing, copy and paste. Okay, let's see what I'm, what I'm working with. Uh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Let's maybe bring, bring, uh, let's go 50%. Okay, 50%. Yep, I'm liking it. Okay, film convert. Actually, might bring up some of these values. Yeah, okay. So, I could add more saturation if I wanted to, but not a big deal, you know? Uh, I'm liking it. Cool. So in a nutshell, I mean, that's basically how I color grade, right? I use Film Convert and I use Magic Bull Looks because they give me the fastest tools to be able to color grade um, in a more efficient manner and they give me all the tools that I need. Can you do this with Lumetri Color? Yes, you can. Um, I find you just have to do like a lot of tweaking around with it, right? So why not just use two amazing plugins that give you everything that you need? If you guys like the video, hit that thumbs up button down below. would really appreciate it. Again, if you aren't following me on Instagram, do so at David Lee. Send me a DM. Uh, send me a DM. Let me know exactly what you guys are uh, having problems with or any kind of like questions you have on, on gear or filming something, right? You guys need some help. Send me a DM. I would love to help you guys out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel just so you're notified of new content coming out. And remember, friends, every day you have an opportunity to create your experience and to write and tell your own story. My name is David Lee, and I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.